Lost Ark is quickly becoming one of our favorite games here on the channel, and for the next few minutes, I'm gonna do my best to explain why. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, and after 100 hours of combined time with the beta between Livid and myself, it's time to break it all down and explain why Lost Ark absolutely needs to be on your radar in 2022. Lost Ark first released in 2018, but for a majority of that time, the game has only been available in Korea and Russia. For years, English-speaking players have been forced to use mods to manipulate the game to get some semblance of an experience, but that alone should tell you something about the game, that players were willing to go out of their way just to have a taste of what Lost Ark was offering. I don't want to rehash everything from square one. We've already put out a video going through the basics of the game, so if you have a general knowledge of what Lost Ark is, you're in the right place. After 100 plus hours in the beta, we've got a lot on our mind and we think it's worth putting out there in the world, so let's get to it. Truth be told, there aren't a whole lot of MMO ARPGs out there. There are MMOs and there are ARPGs, but a few developers have been successful blending the two ideas together. Games like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, and Elder Scrolls Online have years of source material to pull from. Characters, worlds, enemies, all sorts of things that they can use to populate their massive worlds. Lost Ark, on the other hand, has had to start from the ground up, creating a world from scratch. This is no easy feat, and as many of you may have experienced with New World, it's not easy to create an engaging world and characters for players to interact with. The key, in my opinion, is having a few key characters that keep the story grounded, and that's exactly what Lost Ark does right out of the gate. Other characters flit in and around the main story, and honestly, most are forgettable, but after just a few hours in the world, you have a pretty solid understanding of the major players and where the story is going. This is important, as it'll keep you grounded as you level up, pushing towards and even into the endgame. The other side of that coin is the world itself. Lost Ark is played from a top-down perspective, as most ARPGs are, but that doesn't take away from the world itself. Each continent is packed with diverse regions that feel distinctly different, and if you've played any modern ARPG, you know how easy it is for those things to blur together and start looking the same. Smilegate really hits a nice balance with the size of each region. Each is big enough that you spend a nice chunk of time there, but not so big that you spend so much time there that you lose interest. That's a lot harder to pull off than you might expect, and keeps the world feeling fresh throughout the entire leveling process. If you're someone that enjoys story, there's enough there to latch onto as well. Leveling through the game means following a major storyline, and while you are on a pretty linear path, having that North Star really helps keep things cohesive. You'll move through each zone in a carefully crafted way, hitting hubs where you'll pick up the next part of your main story, as well as a few additional quests. Everything is well thought out and will take you to every corner of a region before moving on to the next area. And this, my friends, makes up the core of the leveling experience. There's nothing worse than spamming one button, killing the same mob 50 times, and turning in a quest for next to no reward. Smilegate really seems to have learned from the mistakes of the past, and it shows throughout the entire leveling process. It's a grind, and I don't want you to think that it's not, but there are so many things that make it enjoyable to the point that hours just fly by. First is the combat. Without a good combat system, the entire leveling process feels that much worse, and I'm happy to say that is not the case with Lost Ark. Each class gets a handful of abilities, all tailored around a specific subclass, and while not all of them achieve the same level of flash, they almost always achieve the same level of polish. Everything from a simple rifle shot to an elaborate spinny flippy sword strike feels incredible, impactful, and most importantly, deadly. There's a beautiful connection between abilities, and the lack of long cooldown timers makes it so that you're never just sitting there wishing you could do more. There's a true connection between the player and the character. In bad games, that connection often feels clunky and disjointed, but in Lost Ark, you flow from move to move, seemingly connecting abilities and watching enemies crumble in your wake. The second part to the leveling experience is the questing. Here again, the name of the game is Balance, in all things. As I mentioned earlier, you'll move from small quest hub to small quest hub, picking up assignments and setting off to somewhere relatively close by to accomplish your tasks. Everything flows from one thing into the next, and there's no wasted movement, and that keeps the leveling process moving forward. It's easy enough to build quest hubs, populate it with NPCs, and create some quests. 
it's much harder to create a quest experience that takes you seamlessly through an entire region without ever making the player feel like they're wasting time or constantly backtracking. This is the real benefit of a handcrafted world, one that puts emphasis on experience rather than scale. You'll flow quickly from zone to zone, killing enemies, completing quests, and diving into dungeons, and this is where things really started to come together for Livid and myself. There is nothing better than a good dungeon experience, grinding it out with a small group trying to take down a few well-designed bosses, and claim some loot that's just a cut above the rest. Weave throughout your leveling will be a number of those very same dungeons, and you can choose to tackle them alone with a party of up to four players. Everything scales based on the size of your team, and there are two different difficulties that reward slightly different rewards. The first thing to note is that every dungeon feels distinctly different. That's important as the dungeons are often themed around the regions that they're housed in. Makes sense. The second thing is that most dungeons tie directly into the main story. There are often small little cinematic moments that keep players immersed in what's going on in the larger world around them. Some dungeons feature smaller moments, while others really go all out to help you invest in your quest to find the Lost Arks. As you'd expect, things start off pretty simple. Dungeons in the earlier parts of the game are basic in nature and in execution. Enemies attack in simple patterns, and the bosses really aren't anything to write home about. But as you progress, you'll quickly find that Smilegate isn't going to hold your hand forever, and some of the encounters will really test your skills as a player. The further we progressed on our character, the more I started to really enjoy the group content. It always felt like a worthwhile endeavor that ran parallel to my leveling experience. The one thing you do need to keep in mind is that Lost Ark doesn't subscribe to the Holy Trinity model, that being a group with a tank, healer, and DPS. That's not a bad thing, but it does change the flow of a run. There's nothing stopping that squishy bard from running ahead and aggroing everything, but on the flip side, you're also not relying on a tank to keep you protected. It's a bit of a mental shift, especially if you're coming over from a more traditional MMO, but after just a few short runs, it becomes second nature. One thing that's really important with MMOs of any kind is engagement. And I'm not just talking about one thing you sink thousands of hours into, but engagement for all types of players, from casual to hardcore. Lost Ark features a number of microsystems, almost too many. The goal of these is clearly to engage different parts of the player base, because not everything is required, and I'd even argue most things are optional. Some of these systems include the Tome of Adventure, which reward you with a number of different items when you complete area achievements like killing world bosses, finding special items, and unlocking triports in an area. Other things like Rapport act as a different take on faction reputation. Instead of working to win over a large group of people, you'll spend time building singular relationships with NPCs in the world. Leveling up your relationships award you with items that run the gamut from simple silver to cards and combat items. Pets are another aspect of the game I think will appeal to a more casual audience. I didn't have a ton of time to track many down, but they're companions that provide a bit of functionality to your gameplay. Pets come standard with auto loot, but you can activate additional bonuses like randomized stat perks and functionality in the field, giving players access to things like mailboxes and repair features. You do need to spend crystals to activate these additional perks, but those will all be available to collect in-game in the NAEU version of Lost Ark. The last thing I want to touch on is the social aspects of the game. Once you reach level 50, you'll gain access to a rolling calendar of events. These take players all over the world and engage them in all sorts of group content like world boss fights and sailing minigames. It was actually impossible for us to experience this in full effect during our week-long beta because we just barely managed to reach level cap and dive into a lot of the endgame content before everything ended. But after digging deeper into the Russian and Korean versions of the game, it's clear that this feature really keeps players engaged all hours of every day. To be completely honest, there are a ton of activities for players to do, and to give you an accurate snapshot in one video is actually pretty impossible. Even with our combined 100 hours in the beta, Livid and I felt like we barely scratched the surface with the game, but you better believe we'll be breaking everything down in future videos in greater detail. For all you PvP nuts out there, yes, that's another big aspect of Lost Ark, if you so choose. PvP is arena-based. You can queue up solo or with a group of three and take on enemy teams in a number of different game modes. Team Deathmatch is your classic brawl where players score points per kill. Deathmatch is a solo endeavor where you compete in an arena of six and try and survive against an onslaught from five other competitors. And finally, Team Elimination, where teams of three send in one member at a time for dual-style fights. I only had time to dabble in the PvP, but from what I can tell, 
Folks are really going to love this. There's a lot of skill required, simply because you're juggling enemies and keeping certain players locked down with CC. It plays very much like a fluid fighting game, and less like a chunky MMO. That's a good thing. There's also a competitive mode which rewards players based on their rank. This is a great way for players to pick up PvP cosmetics, titles, and if you're skilled enough, a slew of crystals to use in the shop for other items. To say Lost Ark is a perfect game just wouldn't be true. It's a fantastic experience that thrusts players into a new world and keeps them engaged with smart system design and fantastic combat, but there are still plenty of cracks. The game's been delayed until 2022, and in that time, I don't expect a whole lot to change, but I do think it's worth talking about the things that felt off, weak, or just didn't work, in my opinion. The first is the translation, especially where the story is concerned. Because the main story is such an integral part of the leveling experience, making sure that lines of dialogue, tooltips, and everything that feeds into that system are translated properly is important. I will also say that the voice acting really doesn't feel up to the same standard as the actual gameplay. I kind of expect this considering the NA release is the third official release of the game, but yeah, not all of the voices work. Things often feel cheesy, and because of the thousands of lines of scripting, you're only getting some of the voice acting. But for many players, this isn't going to make or break the experience. But for the rest of us, story is important, and spending the time to get it right will go a long way to keep players engaged with the content. Second is really setting the game up for success in the NA and EU. This largely comes down to stripping away anything that could be construed as pay to win or pay for convenience. The team has already released an entire blog post addressing this issue, but as we've said in other videos, everything is just lip service until we see how things will actually play out during the official release. There's no denying that Eastern games lean heavier into those aspects, often giving players ways to skip or speed through content for some money. But in the West, those things just don't work anymore, and it's important for the health of the game and the community that will form around the game that those things be handled properly. Cosmetics, sure, but XP boosts and things of that nature, absolutely not. Something else I really didn't enjoy was the Stronghold system. Eventually, you'll get your own island, and while that sounds cool, the system ultimately feels like a mobile experience baked into an otherwise solid game. It doesn't work, and sadly, there are benefits there that almost require you to engage in that system if you hope to progress. On one hand, you have cosmetics, and you can design your island with all sorts of items, and I think that's a neat enough feature and appeals to a large section of players. But on the other side of things, it requires you to gather resources and queue up research and crafting orders. Gathering and crafting are just awful. Top to bottom, it's an unengaging, uninspired system, and after something like New World's Gathering Crafting Loop, it's pretty glaring just how basic Lost Ark's version really is. Finally, I think we need to talk about the overall aesthetic of an Eastern-style game. A lot of people, myself included, don't really like the way a lot of things are portrayed, which is often more cartoonish and animated. You really get this in full effect with the characters. One, you're gender locked for certain classes, which means you have to play a male or female if you want to play a certain subclass. Second, some things just feel ridiculous, especially in 2021. I'm talking about the contrast between a big beefy paladin and a full set of plate armor and the summoner who's barely wearing a shirt. It breaks the overall immersion, at least for me. And while there is a transmog system, it almost makes it worse because of all the ridiculous outfits and cosmetics that are in the game. This is definitely a personal thing. I want to make that clear, but it's still worth pointing out. There's one final topic I want to touch on here, and that's the end game. We all know that MMOs of all flavors really start when you reach level cap, and Lost Ark is no different. There's a lot on the table, and here again, breaking it all down in one video is complicated. One, because there are a number of different intricate activities, and two, because with just a week to experience the game, we didn't get to engage in all of the content. That being said, let me just put it this way. The adventure really does begin at the end. Once you reach level cap, the goal is to increase your gear score. You'll start with things like Chaos Dungeons, which is basically a horde mode where you'll fight waves of enemies in a variety of different biomes. Each difficulty increases the challenge and the reward, but it's a great place to start your endgame journey. In a similar vein is the Cube Dungeon, where you have a set time limit to move through a randomized labyrinth as fast as you can, clearing waves of enemies, and hopefully, if you're lucky enough, claiming chests filled with loot. After that, there are a number of other activities you can take part in, like the Tower or Guardian Raids. These are basically monster hunts where you and your party will chase down a massive monster through a dungeon and engage them in a multi-phase fight. These are a step up in difficulty and the first real group content that requires strategy 
and communication. In the same vein are Abyss Dungeons, which are more traditional in nature, but brutally hard. We only had access to a few of these during the beta, and man, they are just awesome. Taking players through tailored experiences in elaborate dungeons and challenging them with multi-phase encounters. Raids are also something that will eventually come to the NAEU version of the game. We obviously didn't get to experience this during the one week beta test, but this is the large scale group content you'd expect. Just looking at some of these fights gets me excited about the future. I live for big boss fights and that's exactly what I'm looking for in my MMOs. These are the pillars of the end game experience. And while it seems simple when writing them all out in just a few lines, when you consider all of the other systems in the mix like daily and weekly tasks, world events, island exploration, you start to understand just how deep the rabbit hole goes. We'll be diving into the end game in a future video so you have more detailed snapshots of everything the game has to offer. We can't exactly review this content because we've only just scratched the surface, but just know it's there, it's fun, and there's a lot of it. Lost Ark still doesn't have a concrete release date, not yet, but with a solid week of exploring a new world and experiencing much of what the game has to offer, there is no doubt in my mind that this is a game worth checking out when it eventually does release in 2022. There's a lot going in the right direction, and with three years of content already developed and implemented in the Korean version of the game and more on the way, the NAEU release will have years of content coming to keep the game moving forward and bringing new players to the table. The price tag doesn't hurt either, and while many free-to-play games are predatory and shallow, the changes being implemented by Amazon and Smilegate to make Lost Ark more palatable in the West have me convinced, at least for now. The great news is everyone will be able to check out the game when it does drop, make their own determinations, and they'll lose nothing by doing so. After a week of playing and hundreds of hours split between myself, Livid, and our friend Greg, we're all extremely excited about the future of this MMO ARPG and can't wait to see how things shake out come launch. As always, thank you guys so much for stopping by to check out another Legacy Gaming video. If you like what you see and you want to support the channel, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's the best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. I'm also excited to announce that Legacy Gaming will be forming a Lost Ark Guild on day one. We've already welcomed dozens of new members into the fold over the course of beta, but there is always room for new recruits, so be sure to join us on Discord to get hooked into our Lost Ark community. Finally, if you guys like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.